as you may know, due to opposition to your past comments regarding the lowering of the age of consent, um, specifically your comments in a letter to The Guardian in 1997, you are unable to speak at one of the Ecolent campuses. Um, could you clarify and explain your stance on the issue of the age of consent? Yeah, for many years I've argued that the reality is, whether we like it or not, most young people in Britain and many other countries have their first sexual experience before the age of 16, which in Britain is the lawful legal age of consent. I don't want to see those young people criminalised. I don't think criminalisation is the right approach. Um, young people need education to uh, encourage them to make wise, responsible sexual choices and to enable them to deal with the emotional ups and downs of relationships. Um, that isn't happening in most British schools and in schools in many, many countries. So one of the reasons it isn't happening is because uh, teachers are afraid to give that advice to young people under the age of 16 in case they're accused of aiding and abetting unlawful sexual acts. Mm. So I want to see the legal impediments to earlier, better quality sex and relationship education removed. I want to end the criminalization of young people. I want to ensure that they know they have a right to say yes to sex, but also a right to say no. And that if they do decide to have sex, then they should do so wisely and responsibly, taking care of themselves and their partner. So what I've said about the age of consent has been grossly misrepresented. The letter to The Guardian was edited. It was primarily a defence against censorship. People were saying that a book that had been written about these issues should not be discussed. There should be no public debate about the issues. It was a book by academics, by scientists from around the world. I believe in academic freedom and that was what the letter was defending. It did say at the end that I felt that it was impossible to condone paedophilia, so I made it quite clear that I was not condoning sex with children in any way. I've made that very clear since as well. So yeah, I think it's very, very unfair and very sad mm. that one of the campuses has decided to ban me from speaking based upon misinformation and lies which have largely been orchestrated by the extreme far-right British National Party and by the extreme uh, Catholic sect Opus Dei. They disagree with my human rights work, they oppose my support for LGBTI rights, and to try and discredit me, they've sought to maliciously misrepresent what I've said, or individual members of those organisations have sought to misrepresent what I've said. Um, I should be able to speak, in a free and open society, mm -hmm. um, even if people disagree with me, I think I should be heard and people of course are free to criticise and challenge me. That is the way we operate in a liberal democratic society, not by banning people, particularly not banning people based on misinformation and lies. Even though it must be noted that you did explicitly say that condoning paedophilia is impossible, um, do you think it is reasonable for comments such as several of my friends, gay and straight, male and female, had sex with adults from the ages of 9 to 13, none feel they were abused, to be seen as somewhat sympathetic with paedophiles? Not at all, not at all. So take, for example, the very famous filmmaker, Derek Jarman, who sadly has, has died. Um, he told me when he was about 50 that he had had sex with a young man when he was nine years old. He said it was his choice. He said he wasn't pressured or manipulated. He said he had no regrets about that sexual experience. So my view is, that's what he's saying. It's his personal view as an adult mature man looking back on his childhood. If he says that, who am I or you to dispute it? Now I accept that most sex involving young people is abusive and wrong. Mm. His view is perhaps exceptional, but it's not a view that should be dismissed and denied. If an adult person looks back on an early sexual experience and says they consented to it, mm. they were not pressured, they were not harmed, they have no regrets or complaint, I think we should do the honest thing and accept their viewpoint. Okay. 
Um, but at such a young age of nine, which is an impressionable age, I mean, how can you, at the age of nine years old, be able to judge a situation like that? Like, yeah, he's looking back on it when he's a mature adult, but do, do you not think that as a nine-year-old, you're slightly more impressionable and the situation might not have been what it seemed? Well, I find that difficult to accept that a nine-year-old can know, but Derek Jarman, as a 50-year-old man, looked back and recalled what happened and said as a mature adult that neither then nor as a 50-year-old did he think he'd been abused. That's his opinion. You and I may disagree with it, but I was defending the right of him to hold that opinion and to express it. Mm -hmm. In a totalitarian society, we say people are not entitled to certain views and certain opinions. Yeah. I don't accept that. In a liberal democratic society, we allow people to express their point of view. And if someone holds a sincere view and they're a rational, mature adult, we should accept their right to hold that point of view. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the, the, the issue is not about whether young people should have sex at an early age. My own personal view is it's best for young people to delay their first sexual experience until they're older and more mature. I do not encourage or condone early sex at an early age. What I'm simply saying is, if that happens, and it's between young people of similar ages, which is the focus of all my work on this issue, then those young people should not be criminalized. And that is the view of most sex and relationship educationists and most child and family welfare professionals. Sadly, because of the accusations like I've experienced, Many of them are afraid to say so publicly, mm. but I've spoken to them, many of them personally, face to face, and they say that what I am saying is what they also believe, but feel inhibited of saying because they fear they'll be misrepresented and falsely accused, mm. like I've been, of condoning child sexual abuse. Okay. Um, and if the age of consent was reduced to 14, um, as you advocated, would you make it illegal for an 18-year-old to have consenting sexual relations with someone aged 14? Well, what I've said is that um, I would not support any reduction in the age of consent unless it went hand in hand with earlier, better quality sex and relationship education. Uh, the aim being to ensure that if and when young people have sex at whatever the age may be, that um, they do so with wisdom and responsibility towards themselves and their partners. And that sex should always be in the context of mutual consent, respect and fulfilment. But what I have said is that as an alternative to merely reducing the age of consent to uh, 14, uh, it may be appropriate to keep the age of consent at 16, but have a policy of not prosecuting sex involving someone under 16 providing, let's say, there was no more than two or three years difference in their ages, which is, of course, the policy here in Switzerland, Germany, Israel, and other, some other countries. So that's, a, that's a, a qualification period that prevents young people uh, being exploited, manipulated, or abused by those much older. Going back to the decision by the other Eculent campuses, do you believe parents and school faculty should be allowed to censor what is said to the children they are responsible for, especially when these ideas and opinions are immediately relevant to the children? I don't think it's the role of schools or parents or governments to censor what is discussed in schools. Um, I think schools should be a place where all ideas are considered, where they're challenged, where there is a robust debate. So for example, I do not support far-right extremism, but I do think it needs to be discussed because far-right extremists have political influence in many countries. Uh, the Front National uh, has big influence in France. Even though I disagree with them, their ideas and policies should be discussed, but of course challenged, as should my own ideas. So with regard to the ban on me speaking at one of the campuses, I would have been very happy for someone to come 
and challenge me face to face in front of all the students and the parents about my views on the age of consent. Mm. Uh, and then people can make up their own minds and then they would see that, in fact, what had been said about me was totally untrue. Um, you know, I do think in a liberal democratic society, the way in which we develop as a society is by challenging heretical ideas, by exposing them, by debating them. So, for example, when I was young, when I first campaigned for equal human rights for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender and intersex people, uh, hardly anybody supported that. It was regarded as an extremist view. It was regarded as abhorrent, perverted, degenerate. Um, but myself and others, as a small minority, began the fight in the 1960s to ensure that LGBTI people would eventually win respect, acceptance, dignity, and equality. And over the last half century, we have helped change public opinion. Now, if we had been censored all this time and never allowed a voice, then LGBTI people would still be living in a period of extreme homophobia, violence, discrimination, and hate crime. Mm. I'm a great, great defender of open debate, including debate about ideas that even I disagree with. 